Okay, hi everyone. I'm back with your 231 video, which is titled, How Can I Make the Largest Area? Using Rectangles to Multiply. So if you want to follow along as I read your introduction, today you will explore an area model for multiplication. You will use what you know about place value and area to create the greatest possible product result of multiplication. As you work with your team, keep these questions in mind. Where would we place the digits? How can we be sure that we have the greatest product? So we're actually gonna to move to 254. So at the very end. Okay, so 254 says, Alan has another idea. This time he is trying to multiply 12 times 13 and get an exact answer without having to build the product with base 10 blocks as he did in problem 253. So we didn't do problem 253, so you are, do not have to build anything with base 10 blocks. Alan drew the diagram at right, which is this art diagram right here. Examine Alan's diagram and discuss with your team and how it, team how it relates to the shape he built with blocks. Why did he label the sides 10 plus 3 and 10 plus 2? <coughs> Excuse me. So I would like you to answer that question. Why did he label the sides 10 plus three and 10 plus two? So go ahead and pause and answer. Okay, if you're back with me, we're gonna talk about why he did what he did. So we labeled this 10 plus three and 10 plus two because the tens were labeled separate from the ones. The tens were labeled separately from the ones. This was because, or this was so, the numbers represent length of the side of each section. So that's kind of confusing. So let's break that down a little bit. So what that's saying is if we would have done base 10 blocks, we would have had one 10 block here, which, is, which are those long ones, and then two individuals over here. Down here, we would have had 10 of those 10 blocks, because they're going across this way. They'd be going across this way, just like I'm sketching, okay? And then down here, we would have three individual blocks. So if we had those 10 blocks label or those 10 blocks filled in here, that's what you would see. You would see that there would be 10 down the side here, then three individual. You would see that there were, there's a 10 block going across here and then two individuals. So let's, that's kind of confusing. So let's go into part B. Part B says the shape that Alan drew is called a generic rectangle. That is this right here. It's called a generic rectangle. Because it represents the blocks he used without drawing each individual block or drawing the rectangle to scale. Copy Alan's generic rectangle onto your paper and find the area of the four smaller rectangles. The upper left section is already done for you. In the upper left box, show how Alan got 100. What does 100 represent? Then fill in the other three smaller rectangles the same way. So I am going to copy this down, even though it's already on our paper, just to give us a little bit more space. So 10 plus two, and then we have 10 plus three. So this box is filled in 100. Well, why is it filled in 100? We're finding area. So 10 times 10 gives you that 100. So now, if I wanted to do 10 times 2 to fill in this box, what am I going to get? Well, 10 times 2 is 20. So 20 goes in that box. Now I need to come down here. 10 times 3. Well, what's 10 times 3? 30. And then we finally have 3 times 2, which is 6. So now our generic rectangle is completely filled in. Hmm, that's a lot easier than what we were doing earlier. So let's look at C. How can you find the total area represented by the entire rectangle? Work with your team to find at, le at least two ways to do this. Huh, 
So we have the area of each of those individual squares, but what can we do to find the total area? Well, let's think. We could add all these individual areas up. Okay, so we have 100 plus 30 plus 20 plus 6. So 100 plus 30, and this is area, is 130 plus 20 plus 6 is 26. So 130 plus, one, plus 26 is going to give us 156. And we don't know what we're measuring here, so we are going to say units squared because we're unsure. Okay, so we did it when we added up all the inside, but now I'm not totally sure how else we could do it. Hmm. Well, we could do it the old fashioned way, right? We could do 12 times 13. Well, 12 times 13, so I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way, as they call it, setting up the algorithm. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3. My placeholder, 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. So 6 plus 0 is 6. 3 plus 2 is 5. 0 plus 1 is 1. And I, again, get 156 units squared. So I know that I did it correctly both times. Part D, you're going to get to try this on your own. Alan would like to use the generic rectangle strategy to do more complex multiplication problems. Work with your team to help Alan draw a generic rectangle to multiply 59 times 46 and find the product. So you're going to do this on your own, and then we're going to check it in class. So if you have any questions, go ahead and email me.